Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome to another Chicago Lane Changers episode. So before we address anything at all, we have to acknowledge the fact, how about that Camaro SS when I leave. If you haven't seen the video, make sure you check it out. My guy Moogie picked up this beautiful Camaro SS when I leave and it's about to be crazy. Before we get into the vlog, I just want to personally congratulate you from the bottom of my heart. Congrats, bro. Like, th that's not an easy thing to do, uh, especially uh, at a young age, uh, to get a car like that. And that just takes so much grinding and so much effort and so much dedication and I admire it really you set an example for me because I'm not quite the same way and man I'm just really proud of you and man it's about to be crazy can't wait to uh, go for a ride I still have yet to do that I haven't even sat in a thing what am I doing and the combination of that car and my car and Billy's car etc uh, on the channel is just gonna be crazy and man if you guys are new around here, make sure you subscribe. Shit's about to get fucked up. So anyway, let's get into video, shall we? So I get a lot, a lot, a lot of questions uh, regarding the daily drivability of the G37. Uh, so I figured I would do a full vlog dedicated to just that and uh, take you guys on a little tour of downtown Chicago. As much as a pain in the ass it's probably going to be, Especially early in the morning, and we all know there won't be any traffic at all. Yeah, I don't care. It's all good. This is all for you guys. And, uh, yeah, happy to do it for you. So I have a GoPro view, and I'm just going to take you guys on a ride, do a couple pulls, of course, and give my overall thoughts and opinions on whether this is really a good setup for daily drive. We will be doing a full video on the full mod list. Uh, I know a lot of people want to see that. We are going to be doing that very soon, so make sure you stay tuned. We will get that out to you guys. Guys, look at the size of that exhaust tip on that RAV4. <laughs> That's fucking huge! So we're on our way to downtown Chi-Town. So the first thing you're probably going to notice is the exhaust. So the setup uh, we have on this thing. Ooh, there's a cop in front of me. Hopefully he can't see my GoPro. And I just saw another G sedan. So the setup we have on here, if you don't know, ISR long tube headers and the Motordyne catback. And we actually added two Flowmaster Flow FX resonators to kind of give it a deeper tone and quiet it down a little. Now the resonators actually add a drone a little bit because it gives it a deeper tone. But the thing is about the Motordyne, it has the Helmholtz resonators. And basically, uh, those are those two canister looking things on the back of the exhaust, right before the exhaust tips. And what they do, they filter out really low frequency tones that cause drone. And it's really that simple. That's what they do. That's why they're on the exhaust and they do work. exhaust but not much it's definitely tolerable now it's gonna depend on the person I don't mind it I love you know my stuff as loud as possible or at least to a certain extent of course and honestly I've gotten used to it I would say this thing is about 80% my daily I don't like driving this thing downtown personally of course I'm just doing it for the video now that is a G sedan it's got a muffler delete let's catch up to him Uh, 
60 miles an hour, the drone hits a little bit. Yeah, like right at 60 miles an hour, the drone sets in a little bit. But after that, it goes away. Again, it's not terrible. Now, I do have soundproofing in the back, which does help. Uh, and I highly recommend doing it. Uh, it's called Noico or something like that. It's soundproofing you can get on Amazon. And I bought three packs of it, put it back there. And that uh, really, really did help. Uh, I did. I put it on when I had the uh, Moogie's old exhaust, actually. And it really, really made a difference. So, if you're considering this exact setup, keep that in mind. Of course, you can get soundproofing yourself. Uh, but yeah. Now, the suspension, um, it's not bad, but I'm going to admit it's definitely harsh. And we have 19 inch ESR wheels on this thing and uh, I opted for a higher sidewall tire. I forget what it is, uh, but I purposely went with the Meteor tires to try and uh, smooth out the ride as much as possible. And even with that, it's uh, it still can be rough. Now, if you're driving on a smooth road like this, uh, it's basically like stock. Uh, it, you know, you'll notice the smaller bumps a little more. The real issue is when you hit big bumps. It sucks. And let me tell you, if you hit a big enough pothole um, at a high enough speed, you definitely will do some damage. But I mean, that's just how. What the fuck is this guy doing? Fixing the car. Okay. So now. Of course, being that the car is lowered, uh, it's a little bit uh, problematic with the motor dyne. If you're unaware, the motor dyne does hang very low off the car. And I have scraped it many times. Not on everything, but on really big uneven, on, but on really uneven surfaces and uh, obnoxiously large speed bumps, I have scraped it. That's something you want to keep in mind if you're thinking about the motor dyne and you want to lower your G. I've even actually scraped the motor dyne on stock suspension and stock tires. Oh, I, didn't, I actually scratched that. I didn't have stock tires when I got the motor dyne, but even so, stock suspension, uh, I was still scraping it. So as I was saying, um, so the ride is uh, pretty stiff. Um, the potholes, uh, yeah, I've explained it all. With that stiffness, however, the car just, it really does handle pretty decent for what it is. If you feel really planted to the road, um, it takes corners very nicely compared to stock. And they really do make a big difference, and if you pair them up with sway bars, I've heard that it really helps. And I do plan on doing that eventually. But yeah, we're just doing, I mean, we're not going fast, but, you know, Chicago traffic, but might notice how the car kind of moves uh, kind of a lot when I hit bumps. That's kind of a good way to tell how stiff it is. Oh yeah, just cruising. Even with the exhaust, you can hear the exhaust a little bit, but not too much. One thing I love about this uh, mod combination, especially with the tune, is how little effort it takes to speed up on the highway. So I'm in regular drive mode right now. Um, I'm in the race map. Normally when I'm on the highway, I'll use the e economy map, which I'll talk about in a minute. But it, uh, it's effortless. You don't have to push down on that gas pedal uh, all that much to get this thing uh, accelerating. Now as far as the economy map goes, but I found it only works in certain situations. So I found that the economy map definitely works. I found the economy map definitely works best on the highway because that's when your RPMs are constant. If you're in the city, you know, you're accelerating, you're slowing down. Well, slowing down doesn't use gas, but uh, you're accelerating a lot, you know, constantly changing speed. On the highway, you're keeping your RPMs steady most of the time. And I've seen guys get upwards of 28 miles to the gallon with the economy map. And I have noticed I think the highest I ever got with the economy map was about 25 miles a gallon, which is not bad. Cannot complain about that. But I found that the economy map really doesn't do a lot for city. Honestly, in the city, I just leave it in the race map. Um, you know, you want that zippy feeling in the city. That's where it's most fun to drive. And of course, that's where all the fools are at that want to try and race you. Tune guys might know you can't switch maps unless you are stopped. All right, so we're up to 70 now. You can hear the exhaust. Not that much. 
close though. It's it's very faint. You get a pretty uh, strong smell out of the exhaust. Now that's something I'm used to because as a lot of you know, I have a lot of toys in the garage, and honestly, that smell just does not bother me. For the average guy, it might be a little annoying. The smell kind of tends to get in your clothes. Uh, it's quite strong, and the best part about this car is for you know for what it is it's got that fun factor and especially if you mod it i mean <laughs> you want to go in this thing put your foot god damn this thing you want to go in this thing put your foot down you're going i uh, do a little demonstration right of that but uh there's a bit too much traffic right now to do that hopefully later in the video uh we'll be able to get you good guys are cool i know you guys are probably dying These, you're like wow dude shut up just do a pool already but anyway i'm gonna keep cruising here once we get downtown, we will resume. Guys, there's a tunnel, you know what that means. <laughs> it's so loud, even with the windows up. All right, now we're balls deep. Right in the middle of downtown. Trying to get to the little spot that I think would be pretty cool. Yeah, just cruising around the city. Can't complain, it's comfortable, you know. Obviously, it's a little stiff as I have said 80 times, but definitely tolerable. If you can get used to the little drawbacks for, you know, the, the fun factor and performance that you end up getting out of the car, definitely worth it. It's going to be all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, hit that little bell notification to be notified and be part of CLC Nation. You already know. Daily driving the G. Ton of fun. Great, fun car. The daily if you you know you want a nice daily but you also want a real fast badass you know vehicle to drive this is just absolutely for you couldn't be happier really couldn't be happier and of course there's more to come on it so make sure you stay tuned for that in the future thanks for coming along with me hope you enjoyed and i will see you guys in the next vlog stay foxy